Well, you've maybe heard this term before, tote shuffling. And what it is, it's, it's anytime we go to declutter or simplify an area of our house, and instead of like actually getting it decluttered, we just move stuff around from one area to another and don't fully deal with it. So today, let's talk about how we can put an end to tote shuffling once and for all and finally get our house simplified so we can start enjoying the benefits. Well, Tom and I were cleaning out our garage last weekend and I came across some totes that my brother had very lovingly given to me. Uh, they had been in storage at my parents' house for over 15 years and so he did one of these. Here, this is yours, take it. <laughs> Has that ever happened to you? And quite frankly, the first thought that went through my mind was, I didn't even know those existed anymore and I wish he just would have done something with them so I didn't even have to look at them. But he didn't and so I had to deal with the stuff that's in them. And honestly there was some stuff I was tempted to tote shuffle or just put in a different storage space to deal with another day. But I said, no, I'm not gonna do that because most often that's why our house never gets fully decluttered or we never arrive at that point of it being simplified where we can really start enjoying the benefits. So today let's talk about five different tactics we can use to stop tote shuffling once and for all. So tip number one is to fully deal with the item when you come across it. So I'll give you an example. So this was one of the totes he brought me. It's like the lit, it's disgusting. I shouldn't have probably even brought it in the house. So this was a tote of stuff that I had in my very first house. Uh, my brother Eric and I, we bought a house together. So it was like the first house that I ever like decorated and just had all of our own stuff in. And I remember when I found these votives and I just remember the price tag is actually still on it. They were, originally $9.99 and they were marked down to $1.49. And so I got three of them. I have all three in there. And I just remember when I found these, I was so excited because our house had this built-in hutch, which was super cool. And so I took all three of these and I lined them up on it and I just thought they were really neat. But again, so these got packed away when we moved out of that house and I have, I have not thought about them a single time since then. So then when I opened up this tote, most of the stuff in there, I was easy, it was pretty easy just to get rid of. But when I saw these, I just, I had those memories. I remember how excited I was when I found them. And I thought, well, maybe it would be fun to decorate with these like on our open shelves or something like that for Christmas. So the temptation for me was to actually just take the few things that I had left in this tote and just stick it in the basement and just be like, well, if I wanna pull them out at Christmas, I'll do that then. But I had to stop myself and say no, because that's how we end up just moving stuff around where I literally just take stuff, we're cleaning the garage and move it to the basement. And then I go to clean the basement and I'm like, oh, there's all these boxes and totes because I never actually dealt with the stuff. I just moved it, right? Does this sound <laughs> familiar? So I had to tell myself, no, you need to fully deal with it right now. And that helps us to decide if we actually want to keep it or not. So if I had to actually go and put this in my Christmas bin, because that's kind of the only time I anticipated using them, then it causes me to stop and think if I actually really, really like it, or if I was just having a fleeting moment of nostalgia. And so if I think about going and putting this in my Christmas tote, or all three of them, oh, that didn't sound so good, or all three of them that I have, um, it wouldn't actually fit very easily. And so then I would have to decide if I would get rid of other stuff in there or do I create another Christmas tote? But I honestly really like that all of our Christmas stuff fits in one bin right now. And so it really caused me to have to stop and think, okay, do I want it that bad? It was fun to come across it again. It was fun to think about the memories, but do I actually want it that bad? And I do have some pictures of when we had these in our house. And what I ultimately decided is that they were fun, it was fun to get such a good deal on them, but I don't actually want them that much to create more space in my Christmas tote bin or to get another bin or to right now go and redecorate my shelf. So I decided that I'm gonna pass these on and I hope someone is really excited when they come across these at the thrift store. I hope they get a good deal on it too and it's just a fun surprise for them. Along these same lines is tip number two, which is use it or lose it. And so along uh, in here was this set of rose glass. And so it was a four place set. It had the cups and then there's, uh, there was plates. There was this size plates and smaller plates. And what's funny, and so when I found this, it, I think my mom actually found it to me, but I just thought it was so pretty, the rose color. And I put it in that china hutch to display. Um, 
And so again, when I came across these, I was like, oh, they're just like, they're really pretty, right? But I had also been looking for new glasses for the kids because I wanted to get rid of their plastic cups. And so I had been looking for like juice glasses and different things at Target and Walmart, not finding what I wanted. And so when I saw these, at first I'm like, well, I liked them, but that doesn't mean that much to me. So I could just donate this whole set or whatever. But then I was like, well, but why don't I just use these for the juice glasses? And so I pulled these out and we're gonna use these now for the kids. And are they like traditional cups that kids would use? No, but I think they're kind of fun and different and pretty. And it's actually even kind of nice for the kids that they have the handle on it. And so I know how we come across stuff that we've packed away. And so I would really encourage you to just start using this stuff, especially if you do think it's pretty and enjoyable to look at. I would rather see these every day and wash these every day than those silly plastic cups that the kids had. And so these just kind of make me smile when I see them. There is the risk that somebody would break them, but I think that's what these were intended for. They were meant to be used, not just to be displayed or stuffed away in storage bins. To me, it makes the kitchen feel happy. And so I'm glad I came across these again and that we can actually use them. So the next tip is to group like stuff with like stuff. This is hilarious. Let me show you how many throw blankets the kids have had around our house. So you probably can't tell right now, this is 14 blankets, 14 <laughs> that our kids have had. And how did we get this way is because I've never actually put all of the blankets together before. And so we have some in our ottoman, in our TV room, that's like a storage ottoman, and then the kids had some in their rooms. And then they'll also, they'll go in the car if we go on a road trip, they go in the camper. And so we've never put all of the blankets together or assigned them a home. And so it's a very easy then for them to multiply, <laughs> right? And so what I need to do is to assign them homes and to say, this is where the blankets go. So we can fit like four of these comfortably in the storage ottoman. So four can go in there and then the kids can each have one on their bed because that's literally all we need besides their blankets that they sleep with. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna have the kids, they can each pick two blankets. So they can have one on their bed and they can have one in the ottoman. And that is all we need. So that's still eight. So that's still a good amount, but then we can get rid of the extras. And that will feel good because I've felt like there's too many blankets around, but again, I've never actually pulled them all together to realize how many we have. And so this happens all of the time with linens and decor and picture frames and books and yard tools. And I mean, so many things because they're in different areas around our house and we never assign them a home where this is where all the decor goes, this is where all the books go, this is where all of the linens go. It's very easy then not to realize that how much we have and just to keep moving it around when we organize it. So I think you'll find it really helpful to try and group all of the like stuff together so you have a very realistic idea of how much you have <laughs> and then you can decide how much is actually practical to keep and how much you really need. And I know like with the blankets, kids get attached to that stuff. Like our kids have attachment to some of the blankets and they were gifts. Um, so I'm gonna let them pick out their two, but then I'm also going through all of our winter stuff to get like anything we don't need and we're gonna donate it to a shelter that that's by us. And so I'm just gonna talk through with them how there's people that don't have enough of this kind of stuff. And so we don't wanna keep extra for ourselves if there are people that are going without this winter. And so I think that does make it a little bit easier. So tip number four is to understand that you probably still have too much inventory. So if you find yourself continually shuffling stuff around, it's probably because we just still have too much stuff. And so this one can be tricky because we're probably alike in the fact that whenever you come across something that you've kept, it's because you think you could use it at some point, probably not today, right? But at some time you could make use of it. And so it can be very hard to part with things. But the problem is for most of us, we have way too much inventory and we've kept too much stuff. And so I think this is a huge mindset shift when we go to simplify or declutter an area to really look through it through the lens of but could we live without it? So when Tom and I were cleaning out the garage, and we've talked about this before, like every summer our garage just turns into like our project shop where that's where all the projects go on and it just 
fills up with stuff because we've stopped parking in it. Um, so you can just put stuff anywhere in there, right? Because there doesn't have to be room for the cars. And so as we were going through it, we have extra building supplies and just the other random stuff that's found its way in there over the summer. And it's very easy to think, well, I could use that someday. I could use that. But instead, we have to flip that mindset to say, but could we live without it? Do I want to have to manage it? Do I want to have to manage these scraps of lumber and these pieces of plywood and this extra shovel that we found? Do I want to have to manage it? And to really ask ourselves that question soberly, how much energy do I have each week and each day to put towards managing this stuff? How much time are we spending this weekend organizing and managing and moving stuff around so we can fit our cars in the garage again? And do I want to have to keep doing this or should I choose to get rid of this stuff now so that I don't have to handle it again? So I'm not deferring the decision to later down the road so that I'm making this decision once today and not having to handle this item again. And it's not easy at first, but as you make tough decision after tough decision, as you're really tough on your stuff and, and just say, no, you know what? I can live without it. I could potentially use it, but I can live without it. I think you're gonna find that there's a certain freedom in that and that it does get easier. So just remind yourself like it doesn't ever have to be this hard again. Like you get through this hard work and it doesn't have to be like this again. And then the last tip is to set limits. So decide how much you're gonna keep. It might be deciding on uh, put shelving in your garage and only the stuff that fits in there or in your basement or like I said all of my Christmas stuff fits in one tote and it, it sounds like sometimes we think of limits like that or like oh but it's so restrictive right but what you actually start to find is that it's freeing that knowing that when I go to put my Christmas stuff away at the end of this Christmas season that it all has to fit back in the tote so if I've acquired any new stuff from the tar Target dollar spot or I've gotten gifts then it has to go back in and every year I end up getting rid of some Christmas stuff sometimes it's new stuff sometimes it's old stuff but knowing that it just fits back in there and next year when I go to pull out my Christmas stuff it's just one bin and it's all there it's, it gives me so much peace of mind and it's easy to manage and it makes it really enjoyable. I really look forward to decorating for Christmas now because it's just the right amount of stuff for us. And for us, it's one tote. For you, it might be you know, a couple. For my mom, it's like 12. But, you know, but still, just saying, okay, these are the limits. These are the containers I'm creating. These are the boundaries I'm setting for my stuff. And applying that to each different category that you have you're gonna find, I think you're really gonna find that it feels really good and it makes it easier. I've, I've said before, make the boundary the bad guy. Like, sorry, Christmas stuff, it's not my fault I can't keep you all, it's the bin's fault, right? <laughs> and so make the boundary the bad guy and it really does make it a lot easier. And so really at the end of the day, the only way to put an end to tote shuffling is to reduce our inventory, to put limits around where we store stuff and then grouping like stuff with like stuff really makes a big difference. So I would love to know, is has has this been a problem for you? Do you run into this or you end up where you like go to declutter something and you just move it from one spot to another? So I'd love to know if that's been an issue for you at all or if you found some ways in your own house to stop tote shuffling too. Also, I'll put a link to our Facebook page. We like to share just helpful tips and different things over there as well. And so if you need a little extra encouragement throughout the week or when you're scrolling on Facebook, but thank you so much for watching. A thumbs up is the best compliment that you can give us. If you haven't done so already, we hope you subscribe and we'll definitely look forward to visiting with you again soon.